Now that the chip breaker preparation and blade sharpening are complete, I can begin to put the plane back together and we'll see how it's working. Now I'm very keen on, I live near the sea and rust can be a problem. This is just a block of hardwood. I have some upholstery fabric stretched across it, stapled underneath, and I spray this with camellia oil, maybe once a fortnight. I don't have to do it every day, and it puts a nice thin coating on for me without even getting it on my hands. Now, screw back into chip breaker. Um, I'm going to do the routine that I referred to earlier. We drop the chip breaker onto the blade. We slide it back. We very carefully slide the chip breaker onto the blade so as not to damage either the chip breaker edge or the blade edge and begin to bring it into position. Now I'm going to plane some quite friendly hardwood, some beautiful English walnut, fine shavings. I don't have to go excessively close. It's very important to tighten this screw properly. On my long courses there was usually a point when somebody would come to me and say, ah my plane's broken, it's not working anymore. And what we usually found was that they'd forgotten to tighten the screw, they'd been making adjustments, and they were now planing the timber with the chip breaker. And that doesn't work very well. Now, I'm very fond of these kind of brushes. Very good for reaching in and cleaning out any shavings and dust that there might be. I tend to back the blade off a little bit, I like to hold the frog surface horizontal. There's no danger of this sliding down that slope and blunting itself on the front edge of the throat. Very carefully ease this in. We don't want to blunt the blade before it's installed. It's easy to tell that you've engaged the fore and aft adjustment peg. It's less easy to tell that the disc on the bottom of the lateral adjust lever has dropped into its slot. So sometimes you could be supported up in the air like that. So always check that the blade is sitting on the frog. Now I might push the blade out a little way here. I'm trying to make sure that Neither corner is grinding up against the body of the plane. Here's the lever cap. And I don't know if you could sense that, but you shouldn't have to struggle with the lever cap. Now, it is in fact the position of this screw which dictates how stiff the lateral adjust and the in and out adjust are. You want to be able to work them easily without everything being sloppy. It's clearly no use at all if the blade moves around during use. A piece of white paper makes a nice background for seeing where the blade is. You, you wind the blade out until you can see it as a black line. And you play with the lateral adjustment and you try to get it nice and symmetrical. And then you can start winding it back into the body now, I don't see as well as I used to when I was a young chap. We've certainly had many people here on short courses who don't see very well. So someone came up with this brilliant idea of using these thin slivers of wood. Now, the wood is taken right past the blade and then moved in gently to the center. There was a tiny little shaving taken just there if you're lucky, you'll see it. But I can also feel it and hear it. 
So that's a very powerful technique for finding the place where the blade, the curved blade, disappears into the body of the plane. Now I want similar on the other side. And it's very nearly perfect. If I want to make tiny adjustments, I've taken to using a very small hammer. This rather fun one, based on a toffee hammer and made for me by a friend. So I think a tiny adjustment there, maybe. Gross adjustments are easily made with a lateral lever, but small adjusts, a tiny hammer is very useful. I'm now going to make the blade disappear, like that, and come to my piece of wood. Now what I like to do is, I've got no shaving at the moment, what I like to do is wind the blade out with this finger as I'm moving along. There's the backlash, the slack point. And if you're patient, you can end up with a very, very fine shaving. Whether there's enough there to take a full width shaving, I can't tell you yet. I think there is. Look. Blimey. That is about half a thousandth of an inch. And what I've learned recently is that something in the region of 12 microns, which is a concept I find quite difficult. Superb. This is absolutely fantastic. Now, you don't always want super fine shavings. So let's just see if it will take a bit more. Definitely a bit more. And a bit more again. I really have no interest in taking it to the maximum limit because the business of taking the shaving just becomes a struggle. I'm, I'm quite happy to work with a tooth eye shaving. Perhaps if you work softwood, you may want to take more.